There were three people at the scene, but only one survivor, 17-year-old Mackenzie Sharia, unconscious behind the wheel. Drivers had him. Radio, the driver is breathing unconscious. Holy shit, man. Not good, not good. This is bad, guys. She's alive. We got to get her out Here somehow. Me. Oh, my God. Sarge, we're good to try to get her out? Oh, dude, I don't know if we can. No, just, just pull the flag oh, my God. She's looking for a ball her, uh, She's breathing. She's breathing. Her head's wedged. Let's see if we can get some IDs, guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're all pretty young. Oh, my God. We got two that are gone. The victims? Mackenzie's 20-year-old boyfriend, Dominic Russo, and his friend, 19-year-old Davian Flanagan. Both were pronounced dead at the scene. But while this at first may seem like a tragic incident, the story gets much darker when you realize that this was not just a car accident. Okay. What's your name, dear? Mackenzie. Okay. All right. <sighs> Don't tell her. She's gonna get not go. After Mackenzie was escorted to the hospital, she began her road to recovery. However, that was only just the beginning of this story. The crime we're investigating is an aggravated Hitler homicide times two. I do want you to know that a lot of people are coming to us and reporting things. And so usually, yes, I was told that. usually the most accurate information we're going to get is from her. Yeah, like, can I just like, like take my license back? Like, take <laughs> After a few months in rehabilitative care, it was now time for Mackenzie to face the court. Where is she? Right back there, pal. Hi, Mackenzie. What's up, Alfred? I'm Detective Hazu. I'm the one who's been investigating the crash. You're under arrest for aggravated murder times two, okay? Nobody's gonna ask you any questions. Nobody's gonna bother you. Get your head thrown in. Mackenzie was subject to an extensive trial after police ruled the crash not an accident, but a double murder. Because not only did Mackenzie have a motive, she had openly threatened Dominic with this exact situation just weeks before it happened. But that was just one of the many threats that she had made to him before his death. You can't keep making all these threats. Stop being a little bitch. I can't let you in my house with how you're acting. Like, it's as simple as that. Dom, if you do not open, like, I'm, you think I'm joking. You think I'm joking. You think I'm joking. Like, I said that. What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. It doesn't, you don't even know exactly what I mean. You're going to come open this door right now, or there's going to be a serious problem. You broke up with me earlier. Because you were a little weak. You broke up with me earlier. You broke up with me earlier. This is your last chance to open the door, or you are not coming out of this house all night because I will not leave. Oh, like, why did I just let you in the house if you break up with me? You're done to break my. No. Like, you're done to key my car. You're done to break the door. I will key your car like, if you do not let me in the house. You're gonna key my car if you find it. If you don't let me in the house, yeah. I can't. No. Like, you can't keep. But you can't keep making all these threats. Like, I can't you open can't the door. Kick. I'm gonna break into your house. Then. <laughs> on more than one occasion, Mackenzie had threatened to make their verbal fights physical. And during one of their arguments, she explicitly told him that she would crash her car with him inside of it, which was more than enough evidence to at least put her through a trial. So in April of 2023, the court proceedings would start with a brief hearing. But despite facing murder charges, Mackenzie didn't even seem phased. $100,000 cash surety property, DNA must be submitted. Also, no contact with victim's family. Miss, that means yourself, your friends, your family members may not have any contact. Uh, with the alleged victim's family's member. Do you understand that? Yes? All right. Case goes to the back of Judge Nancy Margaret Russo. Uh, Judge Russo. Is true? Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, the state has provided full disclosure of discovery. I'll talk with her today, and it's uh, her desire that she does not want to have a plea to two counsel. Mackenzie, are you satisfied with the lawyer so far? You can stay seated. Yes, ma'am. We'll be ready to go forward on the Okay, Mr. McDonald, anything on your end that you need? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. A few months later, in August 2023, the bench trial began. And that's when Mackenzie finally started to show signs of remorse. Is, is there anyone else? I would like Mackenzie to address the court. Mackenzie, you don't have to speak if you don't want to. It's up to you. Okay. 
You can sit if it's more comfortable. Whatever's better for you. The families. I'm not the Navy. I'm so deeply sorry. I hope one day you can see I would never let this happen or do it on purpose. I wish I could remember what happened. I'm just so sorry. I'm heartbroken. I love you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. But her teary statement didn't do much to sway the court because the evidence against her was much more compelling. Part of the evidence in this case and introduced in trial was evidence from the defendant's cell phone. There were search warrants executed on her various social media accounts. And I think that who she actually was is directly contradictory to what is painted by the letter submitted on behalf of her today. I thought he was cool. I just one of those girls that can do a lot of drugs and not die. Shortly after being released from the hospital, the police were provided additional videos of the defendant from her wheelchair as she attended a concert. And again, Your Honor, I'm introducing these to the court to show the shocking lack of remorse. Halloween of last year, again, still before being charged. Mackenzie Shirella celebrated uh, Halloween with her friends. These are in Halloween of last year, so these would be post crash just before she was charged in November. This video says it all. That after she turned onto this turn and she was driving the speed limit, Mackenzie Shirella accelerated her speed. That car did not miraculously combust from 25 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour. This data shows strikingly 100% acceleration through the entire final five seconds. It also shows no service brake was deployed during that final five seconds. She put her foot to that pedal and slowly pushed that gas until she reached the speed she wanted to go. No one but her did that. When you drive a motor vehicle 100 miles an hour into a brick wall, the logical result is death. Your Honor, this is our case. This is the type of evidence uh, that at the conclusion of putting on for you. And we ask that you find Mackenzie Shirella guilty on every count. A review of the evidence supports the factual findings. The defendant controlled all the events. She chose the day. Specifically, she chose a day just before her 18th birthday. She chose to drive the car, the time to drive the car. She chose the target to hit and the victims. It is also important to remember that even if Mackenzie intended to also die in this crash, that is irrelevant. After a two-day trial where countless evidence was presented, the sentencing day finally arrived. Before I render the verdict in the case, I want to thank the attorneys. And the verdict? It was not what Mackenzie wanted. As I previously stated, I considered all the evidence presented. And at this point, I would like to comment specifically on the crash video. As you review that exhibit, you know that you are watching the oncoming deaths of two people, and there is nothing that will stop it. She morphs from a responsible driver to literal hell on wheels as she makes her way down the street. This was not reckless driving. This was murder. And soon it became clear there was only one outcome for Mackenzie in this trial, jail. The court, having had count one tried to a pursuant to waiver, finds the defendant, Mackenzie Shirilla, guilty of murder to win Dominic Russo in violation of Ohio Vice Code Section 2903.02A, it's charged in count one. With her fate now sealed, Mackenzie can't hold back her tears. But no amount of crying can change her verdict. Just like how nothing can bring those boys back to life. Mackenzie was charged with four counts of murder, four counts of felonious assault, two counts of aggravated vehicular homicide, one count of drug possession, and one count of possessing criminal tools for a grand total of 12 counts. She was handed two concurrent 15-year-to-life sentences. But while Mackenzie may have only been 17 when she became a world-famous murderer, there are other kids who got blood on their hands when they were much younger than that. Like 14-year-old Perfirio Brown. Is, is this the scene where it happened? No. Well, she's, the body's in the back. There's no scene. There's nothing. Okay. In. EMS just pronounced her deceased. Oh my God, man! God. What? On July 28, 2023, police officers responded to a call about a shooting in Cuesta, New Mexico. What's the location of your emergency? What the? F is this? What happened? Someone, my my girlfriend got shot. Where did she get shot? When they get there, they see that the victim is 13-year-old Amber Archuleta. 
Her brother is also there, panicked and clearly distraught. Were you here? That's that's the whole here. Yeah. Yeah. She lied? <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask you both. What you're doing right now is not helping. All we can try to do is, is keep her alive. The next well, she has a pulse. How good? So it's pretty good. So can you please just go over there and let us do our job? With his sister in critical condition, the brother has plenty of questions, but it only makes it more complicated for the officers on scene. We're gonna, we're gonna, need, we're gonna need you back up, please, please, please. Oh, is she alive? The closer you are, does she? The closer, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yes, does she have a pulse? She has a pulse. Right now. Yes, she has a pulse. Right now. I just need to step back for a second. But while they were busy doing that, Amber was fighting for her life and sadly she lost that battle Let me check boss i just did it was there what is shot that's what i'm trying Maybe to do in front of the face out. i don't know so we're gonna shut it shut it down clear the scene um let's get some tape and start taping everything off tape everything off so tell me what happened somebody just tell me what happened i mean, don't remember i don't remember i have it right now did somebody pass by with this now being a murder scene, officers ramp up the investigation, which first starts with getting the story straight. Is the yeah. person that shot her still there? Yeah, uh, wait, no, uh, they, they drove by. It was a drive-by? Do you yeah, know yeah, who they were? Good. No, I wasn't even really around. I was up in the film. Supposedly it's a drive-by that happened near the road. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out where she was at so I can secure the scene in that area. It's right there by the you know the So you carried her all the way over here? Well, my friend came knocking on the door and said someone shot my dog. But when the officers start talking to other witnesses, the story changes to something different when like he was like over there he kept asking me to get her to the road to see if, like somebody drove by and shot her like a drive by there a story of a vehicle driving by oh yeah he he made that story of whenever uh he shot her and took her outside right like next to that dumpster in front of his like on the road trying to see a drive by happened right there and that uh, her brother went to his house freaking out about it and they ended up dragging her over there the rural chilling happened in real time and we just like went to the backyard and we ended up going back to his house and then next you know he pulls out um like it's a revolver the one that has like a spinning barrel okay and then he ends up pointing it at her and she wants to go like take it away from her face, right? All of a sudden, you just hear a boom. I look, and I see her fall to the ground. I see how she starts to... This wasn't a drive-by. It was a murder. And now there was a prime suspect, 14-year-old Perfirio Brown, who was also responsible for the drive-by shooting lie. I just can't have you inside the house with the firearms and stuff, okay? Now that the cops had more information about the shooting, it was time to break the heartbreaking news to Amber's father. Hi, sir. Father. I understand, sir. Can you talk to me for just a couple minutes? Um, the EMS just pronounced her deceased. Oh, oh my God. God, man. Oh. Oh. He's gone. What? He's gone. No. Next piece of safety. I'll have one of my guys meet you. I'm trying to stay out here to block this yeah, off. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm sorry, sir. My, my condolences. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm going to do my damnedest to figure out what happened. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know, but my son called me a... Oh God, I know I can't be. Meanwhile, other officers were continuing the investigation, but this time inside of Perfirio Brown's home under the watching eyes of his father, William Brown. Did you find anything anywhere else? No, I was out there looking for a casing, looking for blood. The only thing I found are like footprints and stuff like that. And is that yours? Yeah, that's mine. All right, I'll go hang out outside and let you do your thing, but just don't clean that for me. I'm having the state police come, so we're going to do the whole nine yards. Just so you know. But after the initial search of the house, the Browns stopped their cooperation, stating they've got a lawyer. Officer Mato with state police, bro, come on out. Come on out, man. He's not talking to nobody. He's not sitting over here. Oh, yeah, my boy. We talked to an attorney. Any questions, anything can be done. Okay, we're just trying to make sure. Is this the scene where it happened? It is. Well, the body's in the back. There's no scene. There's nothing in there. Okay, I need you guys to step on out. You have a warrant? There's going to be a warrant. We have detectives on the way. We need you guys to step on out now. We've tried cooperating. You guys have already let people go that were here. So what's the issue? There's an issue because why are we supposed to say you live here? Yeah, I live here. This is my home. Okay. Are there any neighbors that we can talk to? There's neighbors where you can hang out. No. There's not. So officers redirect their attention to the dad, and his statement is filled with lies. As far as you, would you be uh, okay to give the statement? I will do. Okay. So you just got here just now, or did you just get here after uh, the Yeah. I was at work. When my son called me, I had a... Did your son tell you anything like that? He just said that there was a girl that was shot, and he didn't know what to do. Did he say we shot the girl? He said a black SUV. But officers knew the truth. And soon it was time to take Perfirio away for what he had done. 
But William Brown did not like that one bit. I'm trying to bring you to Yes, yes. Yeah. So by the way, where are you taking me? To a unit. What unit? Well, did you bring it to you? Oh, he didn't do nothing. I think it's pretty obvious he was going to take me to the Well, that, but what? He didn't do nothing. He's been taking with us. That's it. That's it. Okay. It's going to be in the end of it. So that's the other thing. How long is this going to take? How long is this going to take? Uh, I can't give you an answer because no, I know. But what do you? How long is this going to take? We don't have another place to go. You appreciate this is a dead girl on your porch, right? Well, yeah, I don't have an option either. So you know where to go, but I don't have an option. Wait, wait. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Hey, come on, dude. Brown, 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 brown. Despite his best efforts, William could not talk his son out of being arrested. Stop, stop, stop. I'm not. What are you talking about? Stop. What do you say? You have a dead girl in your you know what I'm saying? I do. I do. I've been trying to cooperate with the cops. They're taking him inside to walk with you guys. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say or do, no one is against your court of law. You have the right to return. You cannot afford one. One can be provided to you at no cost. You also have the right to have your parent present during question. You understand your rights? Okay. Even after being put into the squad car, Perfirio still has no fear. I love you, okay? They ain't gonna tell me, I ain't worried. Hard. They ain't gonna tell me, I ain't gonna... It's okay, just keep your mouth quiet, we have a lawyer. I can't! Bro, my wrists are all getting cut into! Settle down. You have to settle down, you have to be calm right now, okay? My wrists are getting cut into! Hard. I know, I can't. you're arrested, I can't do anything about that. With Perfirio already in custody, the officers now only have one more arrest to make. Perfirio's dad, William Brown. We got information about what all took place. And as far as a black SUV, it's not, that's, that's not going to happen. Okay. Does that make sense? If you're saying I don't, I can't take that was that one. Okay. And I get that. But, um, another thing that you need to understand is there's a lot of guns in that house, right? Mm -hmm. And none of them are secured. Uh, most of them are secured. I have a few that are out. You have a few that are out. Okay. With that, with that right there, have your hands, put your hand on your back. Yeah. Perfirio was charged with murder in the first degree, along with two counts of tampering with evidence and two counts of assault on a police officer. The murder charge was later reduced to second degree. The father, William Brown, was charged with negligent making a firearm accessible to a minor, resulting in death. While Mackenzie and Perfirio may have become murderers before the age of 18, killing isn't the only crime that kids can commit, because this 8-year-old boy was taken into custody for something entirely different. Do us a little kid, man! Pick the right one, got a male running! On August 1st, 2023, officers arrived at this house where they had received a call about a missing boy. All right, the police here, you need to come on right now. She's looking at Where you at? Oh, God. I can't believe this. I do not believe this. So what was the last person saw him? Uh, the guy across the street came out here looking for him. He said he got in a, uh, 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 with some key folks, whatever that is. I don't know he what a key boys is, whatever. He got in a car? That's what I heard. The lady mentions the boy was last seen with a member of the Kia boys, but who exactly are they? They carjacked people at gunpoint without a second thought. Their victims are women, children, the elderly. They don't discriminate. They call themselves the Kia Boys, and they even post videos of themselves committing these crimes on social media. In Cleveland, car thefts are up nearly 90% compared to this time last year. Part of the problem is the manufacturing defects with Hyundais and Kias, and these juveniles are not shy about the crimes they commit. If a juvenile is caught in a stolen car and it's their first offense, instead of going to juvie, they're sent home with an ankle monitor. That's what I heard. I'm from my neighbor across the street. You what they say, got in a car? A white Kia. We was in our house. You wearing all black? The black shorts? Got in a white Kia or something like that. After speaking with witnesses, the officers then set off to try and find the kid. But he wasn't lost. He was committing a crime. Do us a little kid robbing, man. Radio, he can barely see over the steering wheel. The chase then continues on foot. Pick the right one, got a middle running. Northbound Stevenson. Lights in. Red jogging pants. The boy attempts to hide out by a stranger's house, but the homeowners, they weren't having it. And neither was his family member who had just caught him red handed. Hey, hey, hey. I'm in. Fix this, fix this. Who the fuck is that boy? 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 Who the fuck is that boy
Come here, no, come here, come here, man. Let's go. He knows what they The officer then proceeds to take the boy to the side of the road to continue the investigation, but not before the witnesses nearby get a word in. I want a deal. Yes, boy. Well, I'm going to drop that car. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to be in there for it. Officer, how long am I going to be in there for it? How long am I going to be in there for it? The boy was quick to snitch, claiming that the passenger had made him drive. He made me drive it. He made me drive it. You were driving that? Yeah. Yeah, All he right. made me. Okay, hold on. He made me. The other guy ran. That is her popped out. She's right here. She's right here. You're fine. Have a seat. Yeah. Okay. Thinking that they had scared him straight, the cops let this kid go with just a warning and charged the teen that was in the car with him instead for the theft. And that's how the Kia boy's youngest member learned that joyriding doesn't always end in joy.